So the New York Times wrote this article this week, and it's still blowing up. It even managed to trend on Twitter because it was so shocking. It's a deep dive into Susan Kirsch. She's one of the most prolific NIMBYs in California. And I think it's a good take about the kind of people we run up against so often. So Connor Doherty, he lives here in California, and he's a reporter for the New York Times, actually got friendly with her so he could write the story. And like a lot of stories about a lot of boomer NIMBYs in California, they really believe they're real progressives. Like it talks about how she was uh, a member of the Sierra Club and has a pesticide free garden and that she's a supporter of Amnesty International and she protested to tax the rich on the beach. But yet still she wants to fight housing. After giving some backstory, it dives into how she's fought housing in California for the last 18 years. What started out as fighting a condo near her for 20 units has bloomed into her founding two of the most prolific NIMBY organizations in the state. Now, if you don't know what a NIMBY is, it means not in my backyard. And NIMBYs fight housing. And in contrast, people like me, we call ourselves YIMBYs. Yes, in my backyard. Now, Susan doesn't appreciate being called a NIMBY, but she's made peace with the term. And this part's a little triggering for me because she goes into her distorted view of environmentalism and how she thinks like adding people and housing people will create environmental issues. This is an argument I hear too often. The two groups that Susan founded, they push for this idea of local control, that, that cities and local municipalities should have total control over land use because they're the most informed about what should happen. But they don't like the accountability that the states put on cities to build the housing that's required. They're pushing for more of the same old system that's caused this housing crisis. There's so much in this article, and I can't cover it all, but there was this one part that really annoyed me. So people in her HOA that are against one of the condo developments she originally got started with are saying things like, we're not against housing, we just think that you should only put it in high-traffic corridors or near transit. And that's a little messed up. As my friend Daryl Owens points out, this is essentially just environmental redlining. Putting people only near transit and highways as the only option means that Younger people don't get what they get, um, living in quieter neighborhoods. Now, I'm totally for trans-oriented development, but we need to spread it out too. We need to develop in existing communities as well. I think my only critique with this, and I think other people on Twitter were saying the same thing, is that it mostly just focuses on the villains of the housing crisis and not giving any voice to the people that are suffering from the housing crisis. Now, I think it's still important to understand the mindset behind a lot of the people that are creating the anti-housing rhetoric in California, but having attended a lot of the meetings from the groups that she founded, a lot of it is steeped in classes, xenophobia and racism and fear of change, and that's really not that interesting. Still, I recommend going and reading this article, although I would probably steer clear of the comment section.